Hello? Okay. So I had to set to Barack food before. That is not what we're playing today. So, uh, welcome to the autobiography of Shaquille O'Neal. This is Shaquille Legend Reborn. It was crowdfunded on Indiegogo in, I think it was 2014. And then it released last year and everybody panned it. It's quite a different experience from the original Shaq Fu, and uh, hopefully I can show off a couple of weird things. Although, weird things usually just happen when you play this game. You don't actually plan for it. Okay, so um, you have to do new game each time, and it's a rule for if you're running the console version of this game, you have to close the application and power it back up because it affects the load times. Uh, ready? Three, two, one, go. Also, anytime there's a load screen, feel free to read donations or announce anything because we're going to be here a while. A, so a solid five minutes of this run is going to be loading screens. This is why most of the people who want, like, the fastest times on this game run it on PC. It's much faster. Alright, I'll use this time to quickly just mention a few things. Um, this will be the first of many glitch buses, so stay tuned for future events. So uh, I'll catch you up on the lore in a moment, which is somewhat important, but not really. Uh, basically, this is a beat-em-up, uh, not a fighting game like the first Shaq Fu was. And Shaq just has one attack button and has like a string of attacks that goes up to six, ending with the roundhouse kick. And uh, there are other things you can do with that, but the first level uh, locks all of your abilities down until you hit a certain point in the game. Like now, we can do that. So, a massive part of this game is uh, enemy management and being able to effectively use that, which is the size 22 attack. There are three different size 22 attacks you can do. And uh, the one I'm doing is the one for the fifth or sixth attack in the combo, which is the big sweeping roundhouse that can just clear out all the uh, lowest level enemies. Now we have the Shack Slam, which is a charge attack, and that and the size 22 attack are going to be the things you'll see me using the most. Because um, the Shack Slam is very effective at forcing enemies together, which means you can take out just big groups of them with uh, just your regular attacks. And there are a couple of points where rockets will just start falling from the top of the screen with no rhyme or reason. Okay, so those little cutscene kill type things are what we're trying to avoid. Every time that happens, uh, you lose like a couple seconds on the run. And um, the way that you do that is it'll happen if you're attacking like one of these low level grunts, but only if you're attacking one of them. So another reason to group the enemies together is to cut down on the amount of times that happens. Doesn't seem like much, but over the course of the entire run, it really adds up. So, right now, Ye Ye is yelling at me to use uh, a Shack Wave attack, which is basically a ground pound. But uh, we're going to try and save that for the mini-boss, which is coming up in a couple of screens.
Oh, I should have mentioned the uh, different types of size 22 attacks you can do. There are three different ones, and they have different effects and different strengths. The one that you've seen me doing most of the time, the big roundhouse, that is if you do five or six attacks and then hit the size 22 button. There's also one for if you do one or two attacks, which is a foot comes down from the ceiling, or sky, I should say, and it has a chance of knocking down or stunning enemies. And then there's another one for if you do three or four attacks, and that one launches straight out in front of Shaq and knocks all the enemies away from you. So if things get too crowded, that's a handy one to have. Alright, so <laughs> those are really uneventful boss. They do get a little more complex later on. But there's something I have to worry about with every boss fight, and I only have to worry about it because I'm running in the console version of this game. And that is, for whatever reason, after they patch this game, it's uh, become such that if you mash to try and skip the movies, the uh, game can just lock up and not load the next section. I don't know what they did to cause that, but it doesn't happen on the PC version. Weapon use is also really important in this, because every weapon has a set amount of times you can swing it. And the uh, uses go down even if you swing and don't hit anything. This is not an ideal screen. Ideally, I wouldn't be able to... I wouldn't get hit by any of that, but sometimes with Legend Reborn, you just take whatever you can get. Because sometimes enemies will just have a round randomly, and it makes them really hard to group up. Another thing about using weapons is sometimes it'll cancel out any damage animations. And that'll come more into play later on when the enemy count gets really high. jump kick an enemy when it seems like I could easily punch them otherwise. That's something I'm doing to try and avoid the uh, like special animation kills from happening. So that and just trying to force enemies together. If you see me just swinging wildly and there's nothing on screen, it's because I'm priming the most powerful size 22 attack to happen right as the enemies come on screen. Okay. I've had some issues with this. Let's see if I can get it. Okay, good. So the Shack Diesel sections are just you holding down the punch button and walking into people. But... If you do a charge into the power-up, it'll cause all these enemies to spawn instantly. Usually you have to wait for them to gradually walk onto the screen, and it takes a while. But that's a little bit of a time save, to just have all the enemies appear in the first wave at once. Now one of the... Uh, technical problems with this game is that sometimes if there are too many sounds going on it'll drop out certain sounds. I mean that happens a lot in video games. 
uh, particularly older ones. But it's a big problem for the shack diesel sections because usually there's a warning chime that goes off if you're about to overheat. When you overheat in this, Shaq stops moving, the bar completely drains, and he can't move for five seconds. So sometimes that warning bell won't go off. So uh, I'll have one eye at the top left corner of the screen constantly. Because part of doing the Shaq diesel sections is making sure that that bar is as high as possible without actually filling completely. The higher it is, the more powerful these shack wave attacks are. Throughout these sections, what the game will like to do is just throw a bunch of the minor enemies at you and then occasionally throw out special units, like this guy launching the fireworks. Usually, if you take out the special units first, it'll help the waves go by a little bit faster. The game takes certain cues about, like, X enemy dies, so send out the next wave, and it's usually attached to uh, the stronger units. Exception to that is when you're just like right at the end of a enemy count for a certain screen, and then it's just the regular guys. All right, first boss. Now this guy can be really annoying if you're playing casually, but we're trying to go fast, so we're just going to do this. You're supposed to destroy those generators, because otherwise when you get too close to him, he'll just hit you with a saw blade and knock you away. Yes, didn't get hit at all. If you get too close to him, uh, he'll hit you with a saw blade anyway. And uh, that's why I do that little roll to the bottom of the ground. It backs Shaq up just a little bit so that he's out of the attack's range. Otherwise, you're running around destroying all the generators to get him to stop moving, and you have to do that twice. And that's a major time save. Oh, right, the story. So. Shaq is a Chinese orphan who learns a martial art, his master gets killed, and he's on a revenge tour because apparently a bunch of celebrities are actually demons trying to make everyone stupid so they'll be easier for Satan to control or something like that. And right now we are on the way to the, I think, third one that he has to kill. I should note for the uh, enemies you saw earlier that were carrying signs, they don't always drop the uh, signs that I'm using as weapons. So that's a little element of RNG that you kind of have to plan for on the fly. These guys are like uh, the 2.0 versions of the regular enemies. They uh, can be quite annoying if uh, you let them group up and spam their attacks. They basically do like Bayonetta Wicked Weaves, except it's all fists. Um, they can also anti-air you out of the air, so I have to be very careful not to try and jump kick any of them.
Okay, these units are annoying because you can't use the size 22 attack against them, otherwise they'll block it. Although it's weird, there's like a certain range you can do it at, like that, where uh, it'll work. Now excuse me for one moment while I... Okay, we got that. Hello and goodbye. And we just skipped two enemy encounters, including a mini-boss. That's the one place in the game where that works. Believe me, I tried. Okay, definitely want to stop any units that try doing that, because that uh, calls in reinforcements. And the last thing this game needs is more enemies on screen. There's also a weird little glitch you can do sometimes, where if you turn as you're initiating that special attack, Shaq will do the animation one way and the enemy will face the other way. So, like, Shaq will slam his head into the ground and the enemy will just go flying. It's really inconsistent though, so I don't know if I'll be able to pull it off during a run. Fingers crossed that this area goes according to plan. Because there were a couple times in practice I had something weird happen. I don't want to say what it is in case it actually happens here. If it does, I have a backup. Okay, good, it didn't happen. So, while I was practicing this, for whatever reason, I had a time where the enemies on the right, they, technically they spawned, I could hear them uh, off the side of the screen, but they weren't far enough on screen that I could actually hit them. They just never walked to the left. So basically, I had to reload a checkpoint and start that section over. Very glad that did not happen. <laughs> I should note, the voices that you're hearing for a lot of the enemies uh, aren't necessarily paid actors. Because one of the uh, tiers for this game, uh, when you backed it on Indiegogo, was to have your voice put into the game. So most of the minor enemies you see are going to be voiced by just people who backed on Indiegogo. I have to be very careful with the dozer blades once I initiate it to not move. Because they have a deceptively large range on them. Such that if I move down even slightly, Shaq will get hit by it, and that's a one-hit kill. These soda guys will do that attack every time if you just walk up to them. So it makes them very easy to manage and very easy to get a little extra damage in on some of the smaller units because it hits them too.
this boss coming up can be a massive time loss. There's a certain pattern I have to do with my attacks to avoid a second phase of the fight, and we'll see if I can pull it off. You know you're not Chinese, huh? I'm as Chinese as Confucius eating a fortune cookie in Tiananmen Square. It's just, I've never seen a Chinese guy who, you know, looks like that. My great-grandmother was half Irish, but that don't matter. What matters is your pretty boy ass is out to fire. Got it. Okay, if he finishes that dialogue, uh, a dance battle breaks out, and it wastes a ton of time. It's supposed to be something put into the game so that if you're low on health, you can earn some of it back while uh, draining the boss. But when you're going for speed, it is nothing but a waste of time. For comparison's sake, the load times on the PC are like eight seconds. Part of my preparing for this was just knocking off the rust of embracing the load times. So as you go through, you basically see the same enemies over and over, but their behaviors are slightly different. Like for uh, this character, she basically behaves like uh, the blue things from the first stage, except um, she's a little more susceptible to the size 22 attacks. Now the game gets a little more crazy because you'll start throwing these motorcycle dudes at you. Fortunately, all you have to really do is stand in front of them or behind them and hit R2 or L2. Sometimes the uh, detection on it is a little strange, but uh, usually it works out. And also, if you're holding a weapon and you do that, uh, it doesn't count as a weapon use, so you don't have to worry about, like, wasting it on the motorcycles. This enemy, sometimes you'll see me keep it alive because it throws fireballs and I can do this. Okay, that guy kind of teleported. If that's the worst thing that happens in this run, I will be happy. So I'm, I've been skipping all the dialogue, but I'm going to let this one play and see if you can tell me if you recognize the enemy's voice. To die. Sounds like a damn cat screaming from the kitchen of my favorite restaurant. You'll pay for that. Now I'm not expecting anyone to get this right, but all I'm going to say is remember how I said that there was an Indiegogo tier 
for uh, people to get like a voice clip in this game. That one is me. <laughs> Has there ever been a case of like someone speedrunning a game that they voiced in? Or is that a first? I don't know. But these guys are the second biggest damage sponges in the game. So it's pretty important to get them out of the way as fast as possible. The good thing about the size 22s is there's a bit of a buffer on when you can initiate it and when you have to start the combo over. So sometimes I'll just be running around with Shaq, occasionally throwing punches and kicks, and it still counts toward the combo. Now for whatever reason, this cutscene's not skippable. I don't know why, but it makes for a good mid-run drink break. City of Angels, my ass. And if you see me just like throwing an attack for no reason, it's usually because there's another strange thing about this game where sometimes if you try to pick up a weapon or item, it just won't until you do an attack. Now if you enjoyed the Shack Diesel sections, you'll love the Shaktus sections. Because instead of running around punching everything, you're just throwing spikes at everything. This is a shoot 'em up now. Now he has the regular green spines, and he also has red spines he can throw. Difference being, the red spines are slightly stronger, and they can go through multiple enemies. Catch is you can't do it too fast, otherwise it turns into this like weird green cloud, which doesn't do a whole lot of damage. I'm not sure if that was a deliberate game mechanic or if that's some kind of bug from trying to use it too often. Another nice thing about Shaktus mode is it instantly fills the power bar in the upper left, meaning I can just crack off two of these real quick. This section is a little strange because the uh, enemies sometimes have their hitboxes appear on screen before they do. So you might notice that sometimes my spines are just disappearing before they can reach the left side of the screen. That's because they're hitting enemies that aren't actually there yet. The name of the game here is just basically run around in circles, throwing spines at both sides of the screen until everything stops screaming. You could not get away with doing this on uh, the harder difficulties. In fact, I'm pretty sure I'm the only one who has attempted a hard mode speedrun of this. Because the only thing that changes about hard mode is the damage Shaq does and the damage the enemies do. But it is so tilted in favor of the other enemies that even just like generic grunts can kill you very easily. And when you get to enemies where like you can't use the size 22 attack, instant death. Okay, if I do my damage outputs correctly on this boss, I can skip a cycle, but it's a little tricky to pull off. I will push that thing in the face.
Oh, we just barely missed it. So this is going to be a little longer than expected. All right. Another weird thing about running this game is I mentioned like how the, the game can soft lock if you mash through the cutscenes. Even if you're playing on a version where that doesn't happen, if you're just mashing to skip the cutscenes, the score screen that appears directly after that, the button that you use to mash to skip is also the quit back to main menu button. So if you mash too quickly, you will just exit out of your run. The game has a checkpoint system so you can get back in, but it still wastes time having to load back in. Check out my man scaping. I'll rip you in half. This is gonna hurt. Now unfortunately the thing I did in the first stage where you can get all the enemies in the first wave to spawn right away doesn't necessarily work everywhere else. There's a Shack Diesel power-up. Good. Ideally, you want to finish each screen with the bar like almost completely filled. That way you can just immediately do a shack wave on the next screen. Okay, the chime did not go off, and I almost overheated. A little lucky to have that sign drop. Oh, they're actually being very nice today. I've had so many runs where just no signs drop off of these enemies and it makes clearing things out a whole lot simpler.
this area can be a little hectic, but it helps to have a completely full shack wave bar. The rockets that have the ninjas in them won't damage you at all, and they always happen at set points, so those I know uh, I won't get damaged by. Okay, this is the area right before the boss for this section, and I want to have a completely full shockwave gauge going into it. So I'm going to try and avoid doing that for this section. Also, I'm going to say it now so that I don't have to say it during the boss fight. I'm sorry for what you are about to witness. Oh, 
Big girl. Brown and me owns a cannon. Okay, that didn't happen. So, anyway. Uh, Shaq has killed like four different people. Uh, he's on his way to Fiji now for the second to last one, and he's discovering more and more about this mysterious birthmark on his neck. About how he's apparently some sort of chosen one. This might be the most annoying iteration of this enemy because this one has an electrified whip which if she uses it three times she can do this one attack where it'll just stun you in place and you have to wiggle the control stick back and forth until it wears off. This is kind of weird to say, but the signs in this area, best weapons in the game. For whatever reason, these cheap wooden signs are like the most durable thing you can find. I have never seen the animation randomly speed up like that. I'm not sure if that was because there was a bomb dropping at the same time, or what. This is part of just speedrunning this game, is regularly seeing things that you have never seen before.
this is going to be one of the areas where bombs will drop at regular intervals. However, if I take too long in this section, um, bombs will just start dropping all over the place. So hopefully we can avoid having that happen. Excellent. Now, these guys with the bats are the biggest damage sponges in the game. Fortunately, when they're about to attack, there's this little uh, quick time trigger you can do, which takes off a shockingly high amount of health. Alright, this, I'm not going to lie, this is going to be one of the more grueling parts of the game. This is where it's just going to throw wave after wave after wave of enemies at you. And you just got to grind it out. Okay, so, what is better than 100 enemies? The answer is 200 enemies. You might be thinking, all those waves of enemies were great, but I want to have more. Well, fear not. We just have a slightly different version of it. Now, the uh, giant mines that were rolling by before, if Shaq got hit by them, he would lose maybe like a sixth of his health. Here, if he somehow gets in front of one of these moving mines or lands on top of one, it's an instant kill. Sometimes I try to like jump down to get some of the green globs or the blue globs that the enemies drop, like if I'm low on shackwave energy. But here it's a little more precarious to try and do that. Anytime enemies appear at the top of the hill, I'm going to try and get rid of them as fast as I can, because that is one of the things that helps determine how long this section lasts.
locations are coming from? I never actually explained what the uh, glowing units do, did I? They're basically like the regular units, except if they're on screen for too long, they'll grow taller and they hit harder and take a little more damage. You can't shack charge through them to group them up, so ideally you get to them before they try to uh, do that. Okay, good. Definitely want a full Shackway bar going into this boss. Gonna try and use both of those right away, and I'm gonna be a little stupidly aggressive on this one to try and get some cycle skips. Okay, good. So if he does the drink animation three times, he'll do an attack called Tequila Sunrise. And uh, he floats off of the map and starts shooting lasers at you and you can't damage him at all. So definitely don't want that attack to happen. Anyway, Shaq finds this tunnel with a bunch of ancient pictures depicting him coming back to his hometown, uh, completely overrun by demons and just a smoldering wreck of its former self. So he has, he has the Hollywood no moment and uh, rides a whale back to his hometown. And here we are.
Okay, enemy placements not cooperating here. Ideally, all those enemies would spawn together, so you can just hit them with a single barrel shot. So I apologize for the boss, and I'm going to apologize to Columbus Glitchbus itself for the content ID. This song is off of the Shaq Diesel album. It is called What's Up Doc, parentheses, Can We Rock, and parentheses. And uh, Shaq raps for maybe 20 seconds in the whole song, but it's his song somehow. In fact, uh, the group that like really put in the legwork on this song is the reason that the name Shaq Fu even came around. The group is called Fu Schnickens, and all the members have like a word and then Fu. So when Shaq worked with them, he became Shaq Fu. Oh, we got the slowest animation coming out of the suit. You don't really have any control over that. Sometimes Shaq will uh, instantly start moving as soon as uh, he gets out of the diesel suit, and sometimes he just hangs around for a few seconds.
for the record, the conversation I'm skipping over are Shaq telling the developers, hey, I've been doing the same thing over and over for these stages. Can we mix it up a little bit? And then they throw in the same thing that he's been doing over and over. I don't know if that's supposed to be like a self-aware moment or what, but... Also, I should note, if you're playing this on PC, this is when the music cuts out entirely. And you just have like background noise for the rest of the stage, up until the final boss. So that's one thing the console version has on the PC version. Actually, is, there's a lot of background noise happening. Can anyone even hear Shaq's part in the song? Not particularly. All right. Do you it's want to know what he's hard saying? To heal. <laughs> uh, go ahead and tell us. Uh, okay, I'm trying to do this from memory. I'm the Hooper, the Hyper, protected by Viper. When I rock the hoop, yeah, you better decipher. Uh, in other words, you're about to make a funky decision because I'm going to be a shack knife and cut you with precision. Forget Tony Danza, I'm the boss. When it comes to money, unlike Dick but Koss. Uh, and then that's where I forget the lyrics. <laughs> oh, it's... um. Look, look, I'm first pick. Your word is born in. Not Christian Leitner, not Alonzo Mourning. That's okay, not being braggadocious. Supercalifragilisticexpialidocious. Oops, I gotta go. I ain't no joke, so I slam it, jam it, and make sure it's broke. That's his entire part. Well, that was a terrific reenactment. That's not my favorite uh, line in a Shaq song, though. It's what from, is your favorite uh, line in a it's Shaq a song? song? Called, I know I got skills, and the line is, "I got a hand that'll rock your cradle, cream you like cheese, spread you on my bagel." <laughs> uh, 
That's very good. I don't know why Shaq hasn't uh, leaned into his music career more. Actually, he has a radio station. Please tell me that's a meme. I don't know, but it actually is advertised at one point in, like, I think the fourth level in this game. <laughs> it's just on a random sign in the background. That's amazing. Okay, that's another thing you can do on the console version too. If you have a weapon, uh, when you destroy that last gate, there's a cutscene that will not play. And now, this is Shaq's adoptive mother. I realize that's kind of an out-of-nowhere statement, but that's how it goes in the story. So, this is a pretty straightforward boss fight, but there is something uh, I'm trying to do, which is, um, it's going to happen when she does the head slam attack. So, there was an R2 prompt that I did not do there, and there's a good reason for it. While it does give you health back and it does damage the boss, it causes her to do an attack called Hot Flash, where she just spits fire all over the stage, and it wastes a ton of time because you can't damage her during it. So it's better off to just let her do that and then damage her normally. And you can just get health from some of the special units that spawn here. And time is when she stops moving. Time. That is actually very good for the console version. Console record is 109.52, and PC record is 108.23, I wanna say. And they are both held by you, correct? Yes, they are. For easy any percent? And hard any percent. Yeah, hard was a mistake. <laughs> Did you accidentally set the difficulty to hard before a run? No, I said, well, how bad can this be? <laughs> Two hours later, hard record. All right. Well, that was Shaq Fu, a legend reborn by SCXCR, a notoriously good game that he beat in an hour and ten minutes. Metacritic rating 30. <laughs> All right. Now we can get some Shaq lore from this ending cutscene. And then up next, there's actually been a change to the schedule, and uh, we're not going to have Blaster Master Zero. I believe next we have Sandbag with Michael Jackson's Moonwalker. And after that, we've got Terrific Tracy up here, Tracy up here again with Kirby's Adventure. And then we have Chaos reprising his role as a speedrunner, running Astle, and then to close things off, it's after all that, we have an all dungeons run of Ocarina of Time. So stay tuned for more sweet, sweet runs. We'll be back in a bit. <laughs> 